Greetings. Today we're going to discuss the ionic compounds that are type 2s. Type 1s are ionic and so are type 2s. But we're going to discuss them today and see what we're going to uh, deal with. Alright, so let's take a look at the goal for today. We are going to be able to write these type 2 compounds and we're going to be able to name these type 2 ionic compounds. So we must discuss some things in order to be able to do that. The first thing we have to remember is you already know the charges of these elements and these elements right here. However, these we call transition elements. These elements have different varying valence uh, electrons or charge. They can lose, in some cases, two electrons. In some cases, they can lose three electrons. So it depends. These are fixed. Remember, these were plus ones, plus twos, plus three, plus or minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one. But these right here are different. For example, copper can be copper plus one or copper plus two. Iron can be iron plus two or iron plus three. So it all depends. So we have a certain system in order to predict what the charge is. All right, so we're going to look at some of the rules. The same rules that we learned for binary compounds apply here. But the key is that we have to look at the Roman numeral. If we're going from the name to the formula, the Roman numeral will tell us the charge of the cation. And that's extremely important. So we must look for that Roman numeral to find that charge. The charge of the anion can be found in the traditional way, looking at the periodic table with the numbers. And then we simply crisscross to determine the formula. All right, we're going to try some uh, work here. We're going to we're going to try to write the formulas for these compounds. Notice here's the Roman numerals, but I'm going to assume that you know the Roman numerals. So this means two. So the first thing I'm going to write is the symbol. I'm going to write F E, and the charge. The Roman numeral tells me the charge. So that is a charge of plus two. Then I have bromide. Okay? And if you go back to your periodic table for a moment, take a look at where bromide is. It's in the group that has minus one. So minus one. Now it's time for us to crisscross. Later on you will learn a little bit more why. But we're going to crisscross them and I'm not going to bring down the charge, I'm only bringing down the number. If it's 1, it's understood. We don't have to write it. And we're bringing down this 2. So we crisscross this way. The 1 comes down here, but it's understood. So I can rewrite it as FeBr2. And I'm done. That's my formula. Let's take a look at this one. Lead. So I'm going to write Pb. The charge is plus 4, iodide, I, the charge, looking back at your periodic table, minus 1, we crisscross, and I'm going to say it's PB1, don't need to write it, I4. Excellent. Now we're here at lead 2 oxide. Lead, 2 plus, I did it backwards this time, but that's okay, just out of habit. Um, oxide, O, 2 negative, I'm going to crisscross again. So technically this would be PB2, O, 2. But since this is a 2 to 2 ratio, it's the same as a 1 to 1 ratio. Ionic compounds work because they are ratios, 1 to 1, 2 to 2. So if it's a 2 to 2 ratio, I reduce it to a 1 to 1 ratio, and it becomes PBO. That is the correct formula for that. All right, let's move right along to the next uh, slide. And uh, 
All right, so now we are going to go backwards. From the formula, we are going to name the compound. So now we have to kind of roll it back a little bit and uh, determine the charges of the ions. To start with, we're going to always focus on the negative ion. Because the negative ion, we know that one. We can look at the periodic table, the top of the periodic table, and that tells us what the charge is. So then we're going to go backwards, figure out what the charge of the positive ion is, and then go ahead and write the name using a Roman numeral. So I'm going to go ahead and move forward to give you some examples. So of course you can pause any time in order to copy this information because I'm going a little bit fast here. All right, so now I have this compound, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to determine the, the charge of the negative ion, the anion. So I go to my periodic table, go back, take your periodic table. It's a negative 2 at the top, negative 2. So since this is a negative 2, since this is a 1 to 1 ratio, this must be a positive 2. So that if when you crisscross, it's 2 to 2 ratio, we reduce it to a 1 to 1 ratio, and it becomes FeO. However, to name this compound, I'm going to say, since the charge of iron is 2, I'm going to write iron, Roman numeral 2, oxide. Remember that the ending is always IDE for monatomic ions. A little later, we're going to discuss polyatomic ions in a later podcast. All right, here we are. Now I'm going to work backwards. Take a look. This came from up here, and this came from over here. So I know that oxygen is negative 2, because from the periodic table. So this must be positive 3. So in order to write this, I write iron, the charge as a Roman numeral, iron 3 oxide. All right, here we go. The next one, we have nickel. I know that chloride, look up chloride on the chart, it is negative one charge. So we're going to say, we're going to work backwards. One, and this comes up here, plus three, meaning nickel three, Chloride. Notice they all end in IDE. All the monatomic anions end in IDE. Monatomic anions. All right, finally, we have this one. Nickel, this is negative one. We know that. This must be positive two. Why? Because this is a plus two. There are two negative charges. That means negative 2, positive 2, must be equal to 0. Always, all compounds must be equal to 0. So the name of this compound is nickel 2 chloride. Remember this, all compounds must equal 0. They must be neutral. The number lost, the number of electrons lost and gained makes it that. So let's take this example. Nickel having a plus three charge, it means that for every nickel, we have to have three chlorides to balance it out. So I have nickel plus three. In order to balance this out, if it's combining with chlorine, I need three negative charges to balance it out. So plus three and negative three gives you a neutral atom. I'm sorry, a neutral compound. That's it. Keep in mind that the transition elements, these right in here, are polyvalent, meaning they can have various charges. But there are 
three exceptions that I want you to know right now. For example, zinc, and I want you to write these down as I'm saying them. Zinc always has a plus two charge. Cadmium always has a plus two charge. Silver always has a plus one charge. So these are transitions, however, they are not polyvalent. Furthermore, there are some that are not transition that are polyvalent. I'm going to show you a listing, but we have uh, a couple of examples here are tin and lead. Now, I'm going to show you on the board, I have written down some of the uh, polyvalent, the common ones, polyvalent metals that are listed in your textbook. You have a chart in your textbook that lists this, but I'll show you anyway. Here are the common ones. Jot them down. Be sure you have them. They are also listed in your textbook. Have a wonderful evening.